Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us here at the ESL One Cologne Offline Qualifier. We're holding it from here in Katowice, of course, one of the best places to be for some good esports action. Well, if you just missed it, of course, we did see Optic make it to the Major. It was a close one on cash, but they managed to edge Hellraisers out in that one. However, Hellraisers aren't done yet. They still have another chance later today to make it through. We may see Optic be the only North American team go through to the Major, or we may not, if this next team has something to say about it. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together from North America. It's Cloud9. All smiles for them right now, but every game for Cloud9 so far, they've been forced to mount a comeback, and against Mouse Sports, it just wasn't enough. But of course, in their last game, it was an impressive performance against Tai Lu. That was an impressive display of mental fortitude, the likes of which we rarely see, and it was really on the back of Skadoodle there as well. Massive lift from him in the second half on cash against Tai Lu. He went 20 for four. The double AWP setup was instrumental for Cloud9 bringing things back and actually taking the game. And their opponents, someone that haven't played for quite some time. In fact, it was a global eSports Cup, and it was actually Envious' win 2-0. to zero. Let's welcome them now to the stage. Bring on Envy! Are they hot? Or are they cold? That's the big question that people still have about these guys. They're not quite sure exactly what envy they're going to see on a certain time, but they made a statement yesterday as well. A 16-4 crushing victory over Spice, who's showing us that they at least can nail those fundamentals down, but this is going to be a challenge for them. Now, they did have the better of Cloud9, of course, back at the Global Esports Cup, but that was before Cloud9 added Slemmy to the roster. Things have changed, mentalities have changed, and we know that Envious is in a rebuilding period. They're trying out some new things, and let's see if any of the tools in the kit is going to be enough to deal with Cloud9. Alex, this is going to be a blockbuster, mate. These two teams have been raring to go, so let's not waste too much more time. That's exactly the plan. Thanks very much, Mitch. We're going to try and keep this one nice and succinct. Uh, we're going to start actually with the veto, and that's just so that we can make sure we get things underway ASAP. Of course, introducing the people joining me at the desk, we have Pansy and Vendetta. So. Weird way to start it, but let's try it out. Let's go with the maps first of all. Let's kind of recap where what we've seen and what we're expecting to see as well. Let's start with you, actually, Lauren. Uh, regarding the veto, what what do you kind of what are your initial thoughts? Um, I'm I'm actually not sure. The thing is that if you look at Envy classically, they have favourable maps, but again, it's hard to just guess what Envy we're going to see today. So I look at Cloud9 instead, and their comfort picks work pretty well for Envy as well. So it's it's a strange world where you think that Envy, in theory on paper, should be doing much better here, but then I still see Cloud9 be able to put up some contest. But I'm looking at things like Cash being a possibility, but then Envy playing Cash against Cloud9 probably going to be banned out, I assume. I don't know. I find it very difficult to actually lock this down. Yeah, the, the big problem with uh, understanding where Cloud9 wants to go is the fact that, well, they pretty much banned out every single map except for Cobblestone up till this point uh, in their best of three. So they've been willingly all over the place uh, as to what they feel fine playing. Uh, or what they haven't wanted to play. So it seems like they're banning depending on what kind of an opponent they're playing. So going after the strongest map for Envy, potentially Cobblestone actually, so we might see that re being removed, even though it's a strong map for Cloud9, mm. being a possibility. Uh, on Envy's side, they are not going to play Train. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, that's an easy decision yeah. for them to make, especially when you ban down 2-1. I thought we were going to be looking at that veto. Maybe I can summon it now <laughs> if I really try hard believe enough. Believe in it, Alex. I can believe that we're not going to see Train. <laughs> the wizard wand? Is, it, is this it? Do I have yeah. to just kind when of Guardian do this? Wait, Leo saw. There we go. No, no, no. Right, okay, okay nice. we tried. <laughs> screw, screw your pen. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's then, I guess, well, the point I wanted to make and actually open with, which was conveniently on screen there, yeah. was actually the, the proficiency of Apex. Mm. Um, it's been so long since we've been able to you know, sing his praises in a consistent manner. Well, I think everyone comes back to the point, though, is when Apex is hot, you see Envy playing well. He's always Same that story. factor that just turns things around for them. You can't say the same for others now these days. Maybe you know you can see a good game from Happy or a good game from Kenny, but mm. it's not never necessarily enough to pull them into the victory position. But Apex seems to provide more than just kind of fragging power. It really does equate to round wins. So hence why everyone says, when you know Apex is on, you start seeing big wins coming yeah. along with them. I mean, yeah, actually, fortunately, we have the maps now, so I'll, I'll, I'll let Halvor do kind of dissect what we are seeing. 
No uh, Dust 2, very quick from C9. Yeah, I guess that, that makes sense. We saw Envy, what they did to Immortals on, on Dust 2, so definitely something that they don't want to go up against. They didn't take that chance versus Mouse Force either, so that's... Uh, it seems like they're basically going against the strength of, uh, of their opponent. Although the Mirage pick is, uh, I guess, it's not necessarily a go-to pick for Envy. They haven't been the same kind of team that we've known them for on that map for quite some time. Are Train we? and Overpass being gone for Envy, that's, uh, well, someone by the book. Train especially, and Nuke, I don't think any of these teams actually play it. And I don't think anyone would uh, kind of risk the chance of letting this be the deciding map for for a map of this... Uh, this uh, Cobblestone oh, number nine. It's the ninth time already. Yeah, we like our cobblestone here at the offline qualifier. Huh. Uh, I mean, we know we know C9 are comfortable on it. Envy played it versus Splice. They've already dispatched of a North American adversary on this map as well. Lauren, you've got, you've got something that's... I, I wasn't that sold by Cloud9's performance mm. on this map, to sure. be honest. They were fine, but then you saw some really glaring issues. Slemmy having big performances really paid off well into it, but again, Slemmy hasn't always been the big performer. Slemmy has been struggling to find consistency to be a big performer. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is going to be a tough one for them to actually get consistency on. Again, the kind of coordination between him and Skadoodle has to come mm. into place. I, I'm surprised it wasn't Cash, if I'm honest. I thought maybe Cloud9 would opt towards that. But then again, they haven't been the most robust on that either. No, but yeah, I completely agree with you. I was expecting Cash instead of Cobblestone uh, if it came down to it, simply because, well, well I guess Cloud9 have seen two matches of, uh, of Envy on Cobblestone now. One pretty good uh, edition of it versus Splice, and then one not so great versus Gambit. So maybe yeah. they've been looking at demos and uh, taking that into account when they opted to go for this map. Uh, but a victory versus Tai Lu. I mean, surely on cash, you know, they, they Yeah, 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 they for Cloud9, absolutely. They should sit there and go instant pick. But Tai Lu's T side was also appalling, so read into that what you want. It's 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 hard to kind of equate that to a really solid performance from Cloud9. You'd, you'd argue that they're actually very good in certain aspects, things such as, you know, Skadoodle starting to find some form there. Actually, for me, it was Shroud, who had a really big game during that one map, which is a bit of a rarity in these events. Normally, he's a bit middle of the table, so if he actually finds a little bit of something here, that's going to be impressive, and nothing as well. Other, other than that, Stewie and Slemmy need to step up here to support it, because Envy are still big dogs. E even just removing their current form aside, they're still probably the toughest competitor to hear, at least today, I feel, for this matchup. Yeah, for me, it's going to have to be... Well, Slemmy needs to have a similar performance to what he had versus Empire in the first game, because yeah. if Skadoodle is a no-show, then Slemmy's literally the only thing that's hanging, uh, you know, holding that ace bomb side down. Correct. We, uh, we've seen one good game from Skadoodle so far, where he's been uh, good throughout the game pretty much, or yeah. kind of Satan to put Cloud9 on his back. He needs to be in this game early on. He can't really let Envy roam around for a, an entire half before they actually get into the game. And I mean, yeah, this, this, this has been a, a running trend for Cloud9. In fact, it's actually came out of Jordan's mouth in the interview. Slow Nothing. Starts, yeah. He just says, we, have, we seem to thrive under pressure and they believe they can kind of they create that pressure themselves by struggling in first halves. <laughs> uh, they did win the knife so they have their choice of side and maybe that's where Cloud9 can break this habit going up against a new look envy discussion surrounding the French side is that as Mitch so eloquently put they're in a rebuilding period. They've given leadership over to Devil the new addition that has been under fire recently from analyst desks all over the world. He's going to prove us wrong and try and get his team to the major now. Predictions though from the desk do you believe in North America, or do you believe Envy are going to make another major? I, I honestly look at Cloud9 and I see so many win conditions they need to hit, which comes down to player performance, but I'm going to back them in this one. You and, are. And it goes against logic, but also I think Envy's performance has been so up and down, and it's so hard to pinpoint where they're currently at. Any other day of the week, if they're both performing to what you'd expect of a standard, it'd be Envy 90% of the time, but I've not been convinced so far. One of these teams is going to be picking up a spot at the major. Halvor, what are your predictions? I'm going to go with Envy for this one. Uh, they looked like they <laughs> righted a lot of their wrongs on Cobblestone versus Splice. Obviously, completely Splice. different opponent going up against Cloud9 here. Uh, a much better Cobble team as well. So it's going to be a tough fought fight, but I still believe that Envy should be at the Major in Cologne. It really does just come down to... Well, a whole lot of individual performance on Cloud9, as we've already beautifully highlighted. Slemmy, of course, new addition, has got a whole lot to prove here. Yes, he may be the brain behind it all, but there has to be some brawn to back it up. And Cobblestone is going to be that battleground amongst these two teams. One map is all it will take. And I do want to just quickly ask for a player to watch. You've already hinted at yours with Skadoodle, but is there another name that for the Envy side that we haven't mentioned? Well, actually, it's kind of funny because if these two teams ever played at any other time, we would have said Skadoodle versus yep. Kenny S. We would have, but where has that name been? Where's both names been? Uh, so true. I guess this could be, uh, I guess, a, a battle of forgotten offers, or I guess of, uh, a battle of slumping offers. 
and uh, whoever shines the brightest. You know what, I'm going to go for out of the two teams, nothing in Apex. If one of those two really starts shining, you're going to see a really competitive game out of these two, and I hope both of them find Fawn here, but it's a rarity to see both of those step up at the same time. And so it is time, you can see it as they do break their huddle, it's time to introduce another big game. Can Envy, wow, Raw! It's rare to see such passion from Envy, a team that usually turn can up... Can I change and... my mind? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly Lauren is a little bit more convinced. This looks like the beast that did, of course, pick up the win in Cluj Napoca. Can they return to try and battle for, to reclaim their throne? Or will Cloud9 join Optic, who just recently secured their spot at the Lanxess Arena next month? We're going to jump into this one. It will be another battle of Brains versus Brawn, C9 versus Envy. And your casters are ready for this one. Let's jump in. I thought we were doing good avoiding Kabul for most of today. Then we get to this match, though. And it is indeed going to be Cloud9 versus Envious on Cobblestone. So, Mendes, what are your thoughts going into this matchup? My thoughts are kind of scatterbrained purely off the basis of kind of what they touched on the desk as well. Envious, they've, they've been up and down. They actually lost, was it 16-10 to Gambit, I believe, earlier in the tournament on Cobblestone. Gambit are no mugs. Mo played fantastically well with York, but you'd still expect them to beat Gambit on their day. We also saw on the first day, 16-6 victory on Dust2. They've been up and down, up and down. It's so hard to call for me. I'd edge with Envious purely off the basis of their individual talent and what we've seen in the past. But Kenny S has been eerily absent. He's actually been one of the most disappointing players for me in the entire tournament. We've not really seen the Kenny S that we came to know and love. And this is the map where he needs to step up. But of course, historically, this is also a map that's been devastating for him. Some of his worst performances have been on Cobblestone, the biggest stage of all. Well, we're getting into things now, and I think one of those poor performances, ironically enough, was a Cologne last year. Correct, yep. So, we'll see if it decides if he gets to return to that hallowed venue, at least here in this matchup. Keep in mind, guys, the loser of this match is not out of the running just yet, but they will have to play one more match against one of our teams that won the first three matchups to decide who is going to get those three final spots. And with things getting started, Envious on the T side, Cloud on the CT side, Envious off to a very slow start. With the default lineup, still no decision as to where they want to go for as of yet. Standard slow play from MBS, not wanting to give anything away. Two flashes and smoke in the hands of Apex, who has been the standout player by far, especially on this map. He is very good with the entry frags out of the B platform and drop zones, so certainly one play to watch out for. But it seems like this is going to be an A-centric push. 50 seconds left, Cloud9 just holding position. They've got this crossfire. Down on mid, it's going to be both nothing and his partner in crime of Slammy. But it's going to be the A-Long push now. And a lot of focus coming out towards ramp right now, not really looking out towards A-Long, which could prove dangerous. Gududl is going to be blind, but nothing holds the line first. There's Gududl popping back out there, finds a second kill. NVK with two quick pickups as well, trying to bring this back under control for his own squad. But still, now they need to get that bomb back in hand. And Happy moving in on the flank. He's not going to be able to find anything at all. So it all goes to NBK. He's going to have to ace here if he wants to win this for his team. Going for the fake plan first. Trying to bait Shroud out on the peak, but it's not really going to work. So he's committing himself to that. Making sure at the very least they can escape with the plant for the third round. But as he leaps out, he's immediately destroyed by Stewie. And it's Cloud9 that'll pick up the pistol. Solid retake work from Cloud9, but also on the cross from the doors. Very well played. It looked pretty bad, actually, when nothing went down in the mid. They had that crossfire I was talking about with nothing in Slammy. That's going to collapse, but nice retake. Envious, however, with the bomb plant. Envious of old have almost definitely gone for a force by here. I'm curious if we are going to see that again. It's going to be Deagles leaving themselves a little bit of wiggle room in the future as well. So not fully committing into this one. They do have enough pistols to make this interesting. Cloud9, on the other hand, only have one SMG. The rest of them running with assault rifles. NB is moving their way out over towards the B bomb site, and it's going to be a quick play this time, moving over towards it, slowing down a little bit once they do approach the site area. Just trying to make sure that Cloud9 aren't going to be boosting up against the Murney thing, but see Stewie getting ready to toss some nades out and just trying to hold the close angles here at the get-go of things. Cloud9 do still have a good hold. Look at Apex, though. Moves up very, very quickly. Almost without making a single sound so far here. They're poised. They're ready to go into this site, but now they've got to pick up the kills on the way in. This is something that you're going to see over and over again. A reoccurring theme is Apex trying to go through first. That flashbang is absolutely on point. The problem is, though, that Stewie K was coming up through the doors, and now nothing has been able to recover after the snowstorm descended in his eyes, and Stewie is going to be there with the FAMAS. It's looking great, but MBK... Again, in a similar position to last time, is the remaining envious member up against an army of Cloud9. He has the Deagle, but he doesn't have the bomb. So it's, his days are numbered, Blue, I have to feel. 
He'll be looking to recover that now, but maybe finding some more pot shots to be seen as of yet here. Sitting back. He's found one takedown, but nobody from Cloud9 is giving him anything at all. They know they've got that bomb. They know he's going to be the one to push, so there's no reason for Cloud9 to go out into the open just as NBK goes for the peak. It'll be Shroud. It pops back out and takes him down. I think he's not going to be able to find any more kills there, and Cloud9 find the second. Ambius looking like they're going to go for a force again, or at least a half by it puts Kenny down to 1.5k and the reason why I'm a little bit surprised by that is because typically he would want to be biting a bullet and just say nope I don't want to buy anything on that orb as soon as possible maybe this is factoring into his lack of confidence with the orb right now that he isn't just saving he isn't just allowing that those funds to build up for the orb interesting regardless though the pistols and the Kevlar few grenades and it's going to be a fast B play, but actually they slow down. That allows the grenade to bounce right under their feet and do significant damage. It's 3-2K close range, gets flashbanged. Did a lot of damage, but will fall down. One for one trade. Trial looking for more as well, but he's looking the wrong direction, and that's going to leave him in the open. Kenny finding a kill. Nothing. A little bit unstable with the aim there, too, as Happy finds a frag over towards nothing. So in the three on two, Skadoodle moving in very quickly to try to take back some control here towards the tree, but he's got to be careful of Happy still positioned inside of the drop room. As we can see, some more damage going on in the MBK as well. But Happy, nicely done, grabs the head off of Slemmy. It's all in Skadoodle's hands now, and he's going to be pushed by Kenny to give Envious their first round of the match. Well, there you go. You can pretty much scrap everything I just said because they won the round. So now Kenny can get an AWP if you want to trade out with assault rifles instead, realizing Cloud9's economy in no position to have a solid buy. So what's the point in having an AWP and potentially giving that across to the CTs? Be keeping it with the assault rifle. So good bounce back from Envious. Important to get themselves on the board, get some confidence building, but also on the other side of the coin to break Cloud9's economy and force them onto pistols. Nice boost here to try to catch anything countered out. Ooh, there we go, Shroud. Hello. Popping right up through Broken Wall, destroys Kenny. Now they've got the edge in this matchup, at least for now, but still fairly lackluster buy from C9. It's still going to be their ultimate problem when Envious go for the take. That's one hell of a way to kick the round off though from Shroud who is another player that has looked a bit suspect at times in this tournament, not necessarily performing to the level you expect. I think Mirage had five kills at half time on the CT side. But good beginning from Cloud9. MVS will not be pulling the trigger just yet. Cloud9 stacking three players on B. They have a fourth, which is Shroud's Deagle. It's just behind them around Connector. Slammy, they're the last remaining player over on A side. But again, MVS are not giving anything away just yet. They still have a lot of grenades to play off. Finally going to take some control over drop zone and push off the B platform. Happy looking for the way in along with NBK here too. Playing Dolly's at this point, but as they move out, Skadoodle's going to be blind, taking him down. Happy chaining together a second one here as well, but nothing is able to pick up an additional kill for this team. And he gets a second there. Finally going to be decked down by Devil. As he overpeaks just a little bit, extends his range, but we'll be in a two-on-two. -two. And not only will this be the two-on-two, -two, but Apex will be extremely low, down at 16 HP. So he'll have to be a very, very careful about this play. No grenades, though, for Cloud9, so it's looking like it could be possible, but it's going to be very difficult. That's one way of alleviating the pressure. It's all on Shroud. He started this round off. Can he finish it as well for Cloud9? Devil's playing the time perfectly. He knows that Shroud is very low. He's actually got his clock out. He could have actually reloaded his weapon this time, but it doesn't matter. I was very nervous for Envious. Cloud9, though, all things considered, that is a pretty sick eco. Full-on pistols. They take four players down, and they've bolstered their economy so they can get a decent buy here. There is a pause, and I assume this is a technical issue. Yeah. It will be a technical pause now. Why has something gone wrong? And also, very early on for this to be tactical. Yeah, that would be pretty pretty hard tilt if you're calling out fifth <laughs> round. Like, we've got to call these tactics much, out, boys. Much bigger issues than what's going on in-game <laughs> if, uh, if you're calling a tactical pause this early. But tied up at 2-2, two to two, and like you said, with Cloud9 doing as much damage as they did on that minimal of a buy, it's going to keep the money very much so in the control of Cloud9 in the event when they do pick up a win or two here. Now, looking at the economy, Stewie's on 3.9k, obviously not great, but then you got nothing, and Shroud both on 5.6, Slemmy's on 4.9, Skadoodle's on 4.1. So the choice now for Cloud9 really is between full buying or getting a half buy of like pistols and Kevlar, something like that. What do you go for here, Blue, personally? I, I feel Cloud9 may pull the trigger and go for a full buy. Uh, it's a bit rough to see it, but 
I, uh, I do I do have to agree with you when I say they would go for this. There's really only one player sitting below the brink, and that would be Stewie. And they should be able to make up for that. Skadoodle's sitting on 4.1. If they want to give him an up, they could absolutely donate him a gun over from either Shroud or nothing. And then from there, the buy is still going to be extremely full at this point. Really, one or two players are going to be slouching, so no yeah. reason to not go for it at this point in time. Especially when the scoreline is so close, and after they just had an eco round like that, if they can actually win out that round, then they can probably try to break Envy pretty quickly. Plus with Stewie, even with 3.9k, he's a kind of player likes to be up in the face, likes to, well, it's always the, the meme, right? Pushes through smoke. So Max 7 in his hands actually would be very powerful as well. He can run with that weapon, guaranteed. As you say, they could drop for Skadoodle. Again, the player is not allowed to discuss things while this pause is going on. That's why they're all sat there in silence, just staring at the computers, making sure they're not looking at each other. Issues do tend to happen very early in the match, though, right? When Indeed. There isn't all that much going on, so... For the guys on Cloud9, though, big player, thankfully he's doing so so far, but I was a bit worried for Stewie coming into this match, because yesterday, at least for the first half, when those guys were playing, they did seem a little bit like he was uh, he had quieted off a bit over the past couple of months, and we were we were, uh, we were not seeing all that much from him, but he did recover nicely in the second half, and at least with starting off here, he's currently you know, top-ranking for his team and impacting the way that he needs to, but of course, we've only seen a few very select rounds, so we'll have to see how that changes as we get deeper and deeper into the half. And everything you just said for Stewie also applies to nothing, I feel, that when he was taking over the leadership role, his performance certainly dipped as he was taking more on his plate. And now that he's able to just go back to the, you know, the, the, the fragging and he says he's the right-hand man of the caller, just allows him to, to kind of ease back a little bit and do what he does best, and that's kill people. So he's on five for three. Again, you can't analyze too much out of this game. We've only had four rounds thus far. The pistol round, and the next one was run by Cloud9. The last two have gone to Envious. It was an eco in the previous round. Four kills came down, very close, but Devil clutched it out. And now we are just waiting. For Envious, though, I mean, if we look at their, like what's what's given them their sort of victories over the past couple of days, it's, it's been Apex. Like yep. Apex. It's been the Apex show for definitely quite a few of these matches now. So really need to see one or two more of these guys also step up to the plate and bring a good performance. Because right now, uh, he to a pretty large degree has been kind of bringing his team to the brink here and making sure that they don't fall through the cracks now and lose matches, which they, well, they have no business losing. So if you guys uh, haven't been watching the entire tournament, you're curious how these two teams got here. This is the 2-1 matchup. The winner of this goes through to Cologne. The loser has one more chance. They will be playing later on this evening. Envious won their first game against the Mortals on Dust 2 16-6 and then lost against Gambit 16-10 on Cobblestone and then beat Splice 16-4. It's a very one-sided matchup on Cobblestone last night. Cloud9 also started with a win against Empire. That was on Cobblestone 16-12. They lost to Mouse Sports and Mirage 16-12 as well. And they beat Tyloo in a nail-biter of a match last night on Cash. 1613. So, what I will say about Cloud9 is matches have all been really, really close, even when they've won. Whereas when Envious have won, they've pretty much just taken their adversaries to pieces. Granted, they did go up against Splice yesterday, so that's true. Getting a, getting a bit of an easier match there. But even in that match, I don't think the, the scoreline tells necessarily the whole tale because no. there was quite a few rounds there where it was coming down to 1v1s. And I mean, a lot like Splice's match today. Uh, just struggling to actually clutch out those rounds led them to an issue. But to be noted, too, that the loser of this game is also not going to be out of contention just as yet. They go yep. down and they get to play one more game. They will not be able to play against anybody. If I, if I remember the rules correctly, they're not going to be able to play against anybody that they've already played, which means they won't. Which means for uh, for Envious's case, they won't go up against Gambit, assuming Gambit lose their next match. And for Cloud9 as well, I don't think they can play against Ty Lu since they'll be one of the other teams still in the pool uh, if they lose this one here and get knocked down. But of course, that all depends on the other results as well that will be coming up after this matchup. So there's a lot of maybes, ifs, and buts that we're going to have to find out as we progress through. The issue, for those of you wondering, is a sound problem. So we have an admin on the stage trying to resolve that issue. Once we get any more information, we'll pass it on straight to you. You're not missing anything, don't worry. But for this game, your prediction kind of asked you at the start. It's, it's really tough, right? It is a really tough call to make, um, but I kind of want to agree with Pansy and say that Cloud9 have a better edge to take this one. Just purely off of the individual performances we've seen here today, I feel like Envious right now are in like too emotional of a position to where if Cloud9, now again, this is conditional on Cloud9 actually getting an edge over them to a very large degree at some point during this or the next half, but if they can start that snowball rolling, I feel like Envious are in a really delicate spot right now to where if Cloud9 start to do well and Envious just can't recover, then they're never really going to be able to recenter themselves back together. Well, I can definitely say, see where you're coming from. If, if this had been 
a few months ago, I would be like 100% envious, right? They're, they're going to take this. It's going to be a fairly one-sided matchup. But Cloud9 have shown uh, great grit, actually. As Mitch said on the stage, there has been a lot of comebacks for Cloud9. They haven't been out in the lead by five or six rounds and just closed out matches. They've been up against it and had to bite, bite back and fight back from really poor positions. So even in this match, if Envious take a lead, it only takes them to make a couple derpy four spies and suddenly Cloud9 are right back in it again. We know they they can definitely get that momentum back in their way and nothing said this on the, the stage. He said it always seems like we wait until we're in a really bad spot or we really play under the level that we should be until it's too late and that often loses us games. They know it themselves. One one guy over here from Cloud9 that, again, I really want to see how he performs in this matchup is, is Skadoodle because mm -hmm. the match yesterday, that was summer 2015 Skadoodle. That was the, like the god Skadoodle that we were used to seeing last summer and then disappeared when the winds changed and it got a bit colder. So yep. as the temperature heats up, it seems he does too. I was on the desk for that game and I think one of my win parameters for Cloud9 was Skadoodle has to perform. And even then it's going to be close. And in the first half, he was totally absent on cash. On CT side, I think he dropped 20 kills. Yeah. So absolutely agree with you. I think it, for me, the most interesting two players to watch out for and how they're going to battle against one another is Skadoodle and Kenny S. Can Kenny S finally have a performance worthy of the hype that's been surrounding him since he burst on the scene? Because so far in the tournament, he just hasn't. He's missed a lot of shots that he'd normally make. He's been really struggling, honestly. I think we're nearly there, guys, with resuming this game. Both teams are ready. It looks like we should be getting unmuted and unpaused in just a second, so we'll get back into things here. But in order for Skidoodle to get that sort of good performance going, of course, we are going to still have to see the economy be in a good place from Cloud9, and that is something yep. that oftentimes is in contention, especially because you can get away with a lot on this map with very minimal force buys. Oftentimes you'll see the CTs with a lot less money overall. But anyway, guys, we are going back into things now. Apologies for the delay, just a quick technical pause, and now we get back into the match. Two to two, if you are just joining us. And here we go again, Envious. They have more than enough funds to go for AK-47s, but they're going for this triple Mac 10 Last time it was a quad Mac 10 This time it's triple Mac 10 with MP7s. There is no head armor on Cloud9, what? and they've gone for a force bite. This could be a massacre, but Cloud9 is standing tall. Two kills come out, and again we may see this SMG by completely rinsed off the map. Happy is that, but Kenny S has been dropped. Cloud9 in a 4 on 2 in their advantage. And Kenny S is unfortunately not even going to be able to make that cross since, unfortunately, Devil unloaded on him there when he went past the broken wall. A bit of a panic spray. And for the final two, no control has been gained at this point. Happy, he's got a molly to use to try and toss that out in the back, but what effect that will have. We'll need to see with NBK going for his own peak here. Happy still trying to move his way out, but when NBK tries to push over there further out in the platform, he's going to be dead meat. Stewie taking him down. Now they know exactly where Happy's hiding out. It's so Stewie's going to find the final kills. Well, he grabs three on this one. And Cloud9 take the lead. I think maybe the call behind this, this MAC-10 strat is you effectively get like two buy around to the price of one. And they need a Cloud9's economy. If they force bought, would be poor. They would have a lack of head armor, have a lack of uh, utility. And then if they eco, they're going to be able to farm up the kills anyway. So it's this sort of high risk, high reward play. But then if you end up losing a round anyway, well, you've got AKs in the north yeah. to back it up. So I can, I'm definitely starting to see the logic behind this this buy from MBS. It didn't work that time. Cloud9 now have bolstered their economy and they're looking good. That's Kadoodle. Chime in with his first pickup, but some damage does go back on the Cloud9. And in fact, a kill as well will be had. Nothing. Finding one on his own, but Skadoodle, what? Finds a very great flick onto Kenny S to take him down. Didn't even look like he hit anything there, just whips a kill out from nowhere, and all of a sudden it's the same situation as we had in the last round, where enemies are left with really nothing left to take a sight with, and they've got to try to battle it back. No positions, not really a whole lot of utility, and no kills either. And it's, it's patchy aggression as well from Envious, where they're just putting a player here, a player there, but they're leaving themselves in the firing line of an AWP, which is never what you want to be doing. You just give map three kills away, and then, as you mentioned, you're in a 4v2 and everything is looking doomed. You know MBK has it within him to pull off miracles, but I think this is a bridge too far. He's got the bomb, he's got 45 seconds, and a smoke, so maybe he can smoke the doors and try and get a, a cheeky plant down, but... Get the spray. You can't transfer it to the second player as expected. Cloud9. After that start, we'll take a 4 2 lead. Good work from Skadoodle. So, Cloud9, like I said before during the pause, if we get the ball rolling, I feel like this is where Envious will start to struggle a little bit since 
ugly little thought will go into the back of their mind that Cloud9 are going to beat them and qualify ahead of them there. An old rivalry reborn from last summer. MPS now, P250s, nothing else. So Cloud9 have a real chance to start to stamp their authority on this map and propel themselves towards the Cologne Major. Slammy on long, puts down MBK with ease. Maybe it's just going to stack together and maybe try and flash, smoke on doors, something like that, and then just charge through together. Maybe, you know, the Scoodle has the AWP on the top of the side. If he misses a couple of shots, he could get swarmed, but he does have some backup in Slammy. And there is Slammy with the spray down. Two kills coming in quick succession. Can't get the third, but he's done his job. Envious have been completely thwarted. Happy though, he's gonna grab a kill on the Slummy. Shroud with a quick recovery after being opened up on there. Takes down Apex, and for Happy, nothing really that he can do here. He's gonna try to push his way inside of aiming doors, but they know he's coming, so nothing to sprays wildly, and eventually grabs the kill. Guaranteeing another round for the guys from C9, but this also transitions us into another buy round from Envious. Kenny, looks like they are gonna try to get him with something here, but not gonna be able to afford it, so we're just gonna be working with a Tech 9 this time. Zero ops for Kenny so far. None. And he's had opportunities, hasn't gone for one. Again, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Is this something in the back of his mind? Is that the confidence dropping a little bit with the AWP? Who knows? What we do know is that Envious are setting up for at least initially for a fast play. And this Ooh. is a boost that Kenny S has been doing a lot of. And now this time, Stewie 2 k flies across. It's going to be to his death. Nothing gets caught with a grenade out. Two big kills for Envious, but they have to convert from this. NBK up to three now as he moves over towards the platform and takes down Shroud. Skadoodle and Slummy, they're not even in this site. So at this point in time, in all honesty, they're just going to have to go for the save. And I believe Envious know this because you can already see Devil sitting back on the stairs leading into the B hallways. And he's just waiting now for these guys to work their way back out. Happy tries something down Skadoodle, as is Devil onto Slummy, but neither of them are able to succeed. So two kills at the very least coming up for C9. This round, however, will 100% be going into the hands of Envious. Envious can't afford to throw any more weapons away. They, they have two players on zero dollars, one on a hundred. Fair enough, they're going to get a nice boost of economy coming through, but if you lose another weapon or two and Cloud9 retain theirs, you've kind of thrown away an opportunity for me. Okay, to just push up long on the T side. As you said, Double, this round has gone the way of Envious. There's no way they lose from this point. Oh, Skadoodle's taking another weapon. This is getting way too costly now for Envious. That's two kills that gone down to Cloud9 after the plant. I think Envious realizing like, okay, screw this. Let's just save these two weapons. Let's let's make sure we at least have something to buy next round. So now they do make the choice to save, but it comes in very, very late. So Cloud9 getting some serious damage out there. And they, of course, are still in a great position to go for the rebuy. Somebody's going to be a little bit low, but well, he's already got the M4 in hand, so that's not a big problem at all. Everybody else gets their big guns back into play, and Skidoodle still has the op to work with here. So you can see this play, too, from NBK. Denies Stewie on his attempt to get position there on the run boost. He got himself up towards Broken Wall very, very quickly, and then from that point forward just dominates the B-bomb site. So a bit of a misplay there from Cloud9 does end up costing them the round. The thing is, a misplay from Envious costs them an extra weapon. Devil only has a Tech 9 as opposed to an AK-47, and that could end up hurting them because AK obviously a massive upgrade. I was curious to see if Kenny S would go for the AWP before we keep saying these assault rifle buys. He has indeed gone for it, so I'm glad to see that we're gonna potentially have that to look forward to. Cloud9, I'm gonna have to deal with Apex again. He has just walked his way into drop zone, but Cloud9 consistently playing more of a deep defense on drop zone. They're not really even trying to contest that. Whereas on the other side, Envious will contest this. They like to play a pl someone in drop zone itself, hold the close angle. NBK again, back over here to the edge of the platform, trying to earn someone out of the chicken coop, but there's no presence there. And in fact, he himself is gonna get pushed out of cover now. 69 HP and Stewie finds a headshot as he tries to retreat back into the cubby. Kenny S moving in, looking for the trade right now, and he's gonna be able to grab it, but he doesn't know nothing is up on top of the boost tree. Takes down Kenny S. And again, Cloud9 still holding strong. 40 seconds left. Envious need to start battling for control. That's a messy spray from nothing, though. So Devil is going to be able to get that kill. And Shroud still partially blind when Apex goes for the push. And those two players are just going to line right up. Apex, an easy cleanup there to get the final three. And Envious now within one round of time this again. Beautiful spray control from Apex. Again, showing why we highlighted him as being one of those players to watch out for. Interesting enough, though, up until that round, you only had one kill. He's now on... 4-4-7, four, four, and seven. fair enough, he's got a bunch of assists, but he's been quiet, so that could be the moment where 
MBS looked to, to drag this back in their favor. Cloud9 had a decision to make. They could have gone for some kind of a force instead, deciding to play the longer game. Makes sense. They have the advantage in terms of rounds. This is going to put them with two HEs, and there's Kenny S. Ripping off Shroud. So that'll put a hold on the rest of Cloud9, though, from doing anything else that aggressive. Flashbang comes out, but Kenny hasn't been hit by it at all, so... If we do see them starting to try and jump up again, most notably, of course, you can see Stewie is sitting there waiting. That probably will lead to another death, but this is a round where Cloud9, I imagine, aren't really expecting all that much anyway. So if they can hope to find any sort of pickups here, it may be worth going for. So just chilling on the side as Corpse lounging. JDM <laughs> would be proud of that. <laughs> and he's had a chance at another shot. Would have been asking quite a bit. That grenade lands on the head of Stewie. I think nothing ate some damage from it as well, so that is money well spent from Envious. Looking to go back to the other side of the map now and rotate. The fact that Devil's got himself a kill makes it so much easier. M4 in the hands of Skadoodle though, and he has got Kevlar, so it could be a bit of a power play on the tracks for Cloud9. This is where you often, if Skadoodle wants to save, you may see one of these P250s go a little bit more aggressive and look for an exit frag. But now Envious are done playing around. So time to get the bomb on the floor and end the round as they know Cloud9 aren't going to be able to put up much of a fight at this point. They have them constricted into the B-bomb site and it doesn't look like they're going to be leaving it anytime soon. Since Skadoodle has that M4, the save is going to be the main priority here. You can see Devil moving in to try and hunt down some players, but mainly just checking out the site connector right now. The money is still a little bit delicate here at this point for Envious, so... We're beginning to hunt, may prove to be another risk that they can't really afford to take. Yeah, I was curious to see if Cloud9 would send somebody with a P250 to hold a close angle on the connecting door, but instead, they are going to be trying to bodyguard for Skadoodle, just making sure the M4 survives into round 11. It looks like that's going to be likely. Kenny S misses the shot, but Apex is there, so double ops for Envious. And they'll be taking those through into round 11, so 5 to 5. As a result of Cloud9's save, they're going to have a very healthy buy here. Scoodle has 8.7k. Drops coming in. 12 for 5, by the way, for nothing. It's for 6, pardon me. He's been playing very well so far. And that was one of the questions, of course. If nothing continues to remain consistent as he has over the past couple of weeks, things will look good. Stewie, this up into the plate. Haven't really seen all that much from Scoodle as of yet. At least with the off, but we'll get another chance to see it here in this round with him picking it back up. And that's for Envious. Back to the default split, two and three. With most of them prioritizing outside. Kenny though, watching for an aggressive play over towards Long, so the guys from C9 need to be a bit careful. Someone decides to push out there. He's given up on it though, and is falling back to the site. Yeah, I've seen this boost elsewhere on the B side of the map. That's when Shroud just tapped his way around the corner and wrecked Kenny S with the Deagle. He is deciding not to go for that again. I'm curious as well, if Cloud9 can consi uh, consistently hemorrhage rounds on their CT side, at what point will they start to play a bit more aggressive? Maybe try and get some control over long, get around the back of Envious, play more aggressive through mid, because right now it's been a very passive CT setup from Cloud9. And it started well, but it is starting to falter now. It's three rounds in a row to Envious. As they work their way in, slowly lining up the take towards the bomb site, but they're ready to go for it now. Very passive presence from Cloud9, so they're going to get a lot of control very early on for free. But look at this maneuver there coming in. Skadoodle finds a first kill, but he will be quickly traded back out. Sui, though, who had jumped in the smoke, is going to be able to take down Kenny. Finds a second pickup on the Devil. With they looking back around to make sure that Happy doesn't kill him on the flank, but he's already found the impact to bring his team right back from the depths into this round. That's going to be a good pop flash, though, and Stewie, because he fires off, it gives away his position. NBK finds a second kill from the back, and now it's Slemmy. Alone, no position to work with here. He's going to walk right in, but this is going to be so hard to pull back. Two orbs, though, and actually, NBK switched to an AK instead. Slemmy's going to be coming in. They know exactly where he is. First kill goes down. Envious. Are they really going to let this one slip? It's an AWP. If Happy misses the shot, he could very well end up being a dead man. Slummy has a, a kit, but no smoke. Just to screen his way across. He's going to be holding down on that defuse. Happy's going to go for the peak. Lands the shot. And Envious will take the lead for the first time. So now with them back in the driver's seat of things, where does Cloud9 go from here? Again, they're in a kind of peculiar buy situation where players, most of them at least, are in good enough situations to go for a buy, but some others are sitting below the marker. And as you can see, this is going to be an extremely strange buy. 
An upgraded pistol for nothing, a FAMAS on Slemmy. Meanwhile, there's two ops on Skadoodle and Stewie. And Shroud's gonna go for the shotgun pickup. Like I said before, during the pause, there's a lot you can do with very minimal investments, though, in this game. Or in this map, I should say. So we'll see how this ends up working out for these guys. Certainly agreed. A lot of players will pick up that max level whenever they can. Stewie with two massive misses. Is he gonna oh get my it on time? No, he's not. That could very well come back to Haunt Cloud 9. Stu will be livid with himself if he didn't land at least one of those. Three what appeared to be very clear chances to try and take him down, but they do manage to survive and keep five up and rolling for Envious. Not only this, but they know that op is in the hands of Stewie. If they saw it was him specifically, then they're going to know the double up setup is alive. Headshot onto Shroud from Apex. That MAC-10 is paying for itself. Stewie misses yet more shots, and I said it could come back to haunt them. It looks very likely, especially in a round where so much economy hinges on this from Cloud9. Nothing in the meanwhile, though. He's going to put the 5-7 to use. He's down to 5 health, and he's going to play no further part in this round, but Skadoodle still remaining. Not for much longer. Slemmy with the FAMAS has the drop on Happy. Picks him up, but again, Slemmy finds himself in a 1 versus 2, and again, it's against an AWP and an AK hybrid. Nowhere to go. Oh, oh he's going to be tagged that's as well. Ripped. Just back away. Nade, oh. Unlucky. That just sucks, let me. It's unfortunate. He had the right idea. I think he was going to back away out the window and just try and save it. And then got caught on the, uh, the retreat. But I, I don't like to single players out and say, like, you're, you're the reason. Your team lost the round. But Stewie missed, what, five orb shots? None of them were particularly, you know, crazy shots either. They were pretty, pretty standard bread and butter shots for an orb. So unfortunately, we're not able to find that impact early on. And that force up from C9 ends up going badly. Envious now take complete control of this matchup here. No variations of the strat as of yet. Still just lining up a pretty basic type of hit over here towards the Bebop site. Boosting Kenny. You can see this is good to spot any early aggression from C9. They decided to boost up there and head towards the cubby. But most of their defenses now are focused over here towards the A-bomb site. Slemmy, Skadoodle, Stewie, and Shroud. All positioned near the ramp there to watch for an A hit, but probably will not find that anytime soon in this round, with four of them lining up to head to the other site. Flash is connecting, but so is Shroud. Headshot onto Devil. And this is where Cloud9, I thought, may push someone around the back, and they had a second thought. So Slemmy originally was going to charge around the back, started heading back to the CT spawn, then goes back around again, and is that... Indecision going to cost them? Not really, because the rest of his team's died anyway. So even if he had gone for the instant rotate, it would make no difference. He's going to save the AK instead, playing the economic game. But that now is going to be six rounds in a row to Envious. And this is the point where I feel Cloud9, do they start to play aggressive? Do they start to try and do something different? We haven't really seen them, the exception of Stewie getting boosted on the boxes on platform, trying to see in platform control. We haven't seen them go up long and try and get around the back of them either. This slow, very passive approach is simply not working anymore for Cloud9. They need to adapt. And they need to adapt very quickly here too, because Envy's has taken the lead. We've seen in some of our couple matches before that the CT side has often been able to take the lead, and with that, just completely take control of the match from there. But this is not one of those matchups. Envious are taking a part of the course from what we expect for the T-sided map that Cobblestone, at least on this iteration, has known to be has known to be for now. But uh, the guys on Cloud9 with that save going through, if we get ourselves back into another buy for them. Looks like we should see an op investment coming in from Skadoodle, but again, we haven't really seen any flashy stuff from him yet on that. So with that factor missing, and most of Envious' players hitting their shots upon entry, it's starting to look better and better for the Frenchies to earn their spot at the Major. It's one of the best spawns that Skadoodle's had. I thought he may peer through the doors, but throws the smoke down, peers over it, making sure no one gets into long quickly. In the meanwhile, Envious executing fast, I say executing, is pretty much happy being the one-man army, the lurker. And he gets picked off, but he's kept three players interested. And now Envious will pull the trigger on the opposite side of the map. Slemmy does have backup, however. This is a good call from Cloud9. And with the AWP watching over Slemmy, he is going to be good for a kill. However, Kenny S is there. Stewie2K steps up, lands a kill. Ness Skadoodle as well. Beautiful work from Cloud9. Fast reactions to the call. Good quick kills coming in from him. And just like that, Cloud9 striking again. And they're also back to the double up setup too. Which, in all honesty, I wouldn't be expecting greater things from. But like you mentioned before, there's been a couple times where Stewie 
has just not been able to connect his shots as well as he should have been. We saw it yesterday uh, when they were playing versus Tai Lu, how well he was able to perform on the CT side there inside of A main. That's like his area to work with there, and he's almost unstoppable from that position, but it seems like he's having trouble finding a good position here on this map. Normally, from what I recall, actually, they used to send him out towards long A quite a bit, but it seems they've shifted this now and are trying to play him on platform instead, which, at least for right now, isn't really working out that well versus Envy. We do. But second or third time, Stewie lands the headshot on MBK. The opportunistic shot while on the retreat. I'll eat my words. Lovely. Then again, though, it's a great shot. There's an element to luck of it, right? It's the time. That doesn't push at the same time yeah. he shoots because he was flashbangs. And he has missed a lot of sitters, in fairness. But I said it as well, like when, when a Cloud9 is going to start to go back on the platform, when I'm going to start to try and aggressively peek back on Envious and. They get the, the rewards, they reap the rewards for their efforts. And for Envy is here now again. Still keeping themselves to a very, very slow style of playground, which has been like this entire half on them so far. Taking it as slow as possible. Really trying to fake out Cloud9 in all opportunities if they can just by running down that timer. But now the time gets slow enough to where they need to start making some progress on the site. But Cloud9 as well have a lot of utility to toss back in their direction. Stewie waiting for a push out over there on towards the platform, and he's going to be obliged, taking down Kenny. Happy did find the first entry for Envious, but again, Stewie peeking out from Chicken Coop. There's another one, and a final one, and just as I was saying he needed to perform, he comes out with a huge 4K, and Cloud9 will make it a 7-8 to eight half. Hey, man, Stewie, well played. Well played. That last round, last couple rounds was phenomenal play, but we're going to see if Cloud9 can continue the comeback or if they're going to stumble right after this short break. And welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. We are going directly into the second half now for C9 versus Envious. Envious hold the lead, but it's a bit unstable based on the way things played off there coming off of their T half. Cloud9, though, with the CT side, rocking up seven rounds. They don't jump onto the offense, but we have to see what they can do. Smooth. Camera tours. <laughs> Thank you. Jewel Elite for NBK. Seen this a few times over the last couple of days to so mixed results. I think it was Davey using one earlier too. Yeah, he almost did. like clutched up around with one, so. 
MPK also used on Cobblestone against Gambit. I uh, I like it here though, especially for like this heavy drop play, simply because like the massive bullets yeah. that you can unload in the air, especially when there's like three or four players moving down at once, is even if you do go down without getting killed, you can get so much good damage out that it just makes it worth it in that regard. And you do have uh, quite a hail of gunfire that will be meeting your opponents. Envious on their pistol round, originally set up for a B play, but it looks like Cloud9 going to try and sell this fake fist right into the MBK and Happy. And that now makes this a very one-dimensional, toothless attack from Cloud9, and Envious are going to dispatch it with haste. Don't lose a single player, only 12 health lost from Apex that entire round. Nicely played there with Plas from Kenny, as he just stably picks off some headshots there towards the end of it, so... And these keep things going in their favor now as they join into the second half. As for Cloud9, second round of force up is going to be coming in since so they did not find a plant there. They're just more utterly dominated by Envious and even get close to the site. You can see what they were going for, but as soon as the original charge down drop failed, I think Envious knew exactly what was happening and just wrapped themselves around onto A. I did mention before the difference in the defense. Envious do like to play with MBK in drop, which is where he's currently residing with the FAMAS. Nice shot from Stewie. Puts down Apex. Maybe he'll have to get his hands on the weapon as well, so... A decent start. MP9 is going to go into Skadoodle's hands. The issue is, elsewhere on the map, it's been pretty one-sided in Envious's favor, so... What can Cloud9 do in his 3-on-4? Kenny moving his way back out there too, over towards Skadoodle, but now NVK picking off another member of Cloud9. Slummy going down as he tries to make some progress over towards drop. None to be found there. And for Stewie and Skadoodle, they move themselves out to the T ramp. Stewie's already been found out, however, and they're going to try to close in on him. Can't connect a single bullet there. Skadoodle finds one and a happy. But that's going to be it. Envious again now with another pickup, leading 10 to 7 as they grow into double digits. Cloud9 will have nothing to play with in this round, except maybe P250s, maybe a Tech-9 here or there, but ultimately it's going to be an eco. MBS's chance to take a four-round lead. And fours for masses and P9s, the state of play, with a lot of grenades to back it up. This is where Cloud9 are going to start to struggle a little bit, I think, Blue. MBS have seemed pretty solid today. This is the wall right here, is on that T side, to try and bring something to... Push them over again against Envious. Nothing. Does get a good lineup against Happy to take him down. Apex as well goes for a very wide peak, thinking that maybe Shad's the only one there, but a nasty surprise waited for him around the corner, and all of a sudden Cloud9 have two kills on the board against none from Envious. Poor play from Envious. Gotta say, just giving two kills away. Killing long may be a bit unfortunate, but Happy dying made no real sense to me. Now Cloud9 have their mitts on two MP9s. Bit of utility. And this is now back on. MVS are going to have to play this very sparse. You can see three players spread very thin across the map. Cobblestone, a vast map, takes quite a while to rotate between the sites. So Cloud9 can really start to play the mind games and turn the screw. Luch lurch forward here now is nothing. Who is it for some drop control? NBK is going to be waiting around the corner, but nothing is aware of that. Really, though, just trying to play some mind games so that they can push into the a bomb site. But Kenny is here. He's watching for the long A approach, and he's going to find his first kill against Stewie. That nade as well just destroys Slemmy. Brings him down very low. But the problem is that Kenny has been picked off by Skadoodle as he attempts to retreat behind the site there. It's just a measly little clock as well. Nothing lining things up. What is that? Nothing so messy on the spray. Devil is going to take him down. Is able to recover. Now NBK and Devil trying to push back in for control of this site. NBK moving back up. He's taking some damage, but that's not really going to matter all that much. Finds another pickup on his shroud. All these guys from Cloud9 are so low, and there's the duelies again. NBK rounding the corner, finds the first pickup with it, looking for Slemmy as well. Slemmy trying to waste as much time as possible. Come on, go! Take him down! And finally, he's done it. It's going to be a full 10-second defuse, however, but I think there will be enough time to be able to pull it off. Close, but he's got it, yeah. Definitely got it. You can also see that, that sigh of relief. Just, just a deep try <laughs> relief. Okay, okay. We nearly let a horrible round slip away. Nice play by Cloud9. 
Although I've got to highlight nothing, him whiffing that MP9 spray was absolutely vital for Envious because if he gets the kill, the last remaining player that was already on the site was moving from the truck. So we've had an another player behind him and couldn't focus his entire attacks onto the site and also wooden panels. That was probably the moment where Cloud9 lost the round. Take nothing away from Envious, nice retake, but C9 did get a bunch of kills in there as there well. There you go, that's how you do it, Stewie. Yep. The run boost from Kenny shuts out Shroud. And now the guys from Envious are looking better here, getting the advantage at the beginning. And that's going to cause a slowdown from C9 too. They always hesitate when they lose down 5v4. See, Stewie's boost was just a cheap knockoff, <laughs> which I know a few things about, you know, budget Anders and all that. <laughs> so, rip. <laughs> that's how you do it, yeah. Kenny has done this time and time again. Stewie and Cloud9 clearly have seen that. So we take a look at Envious here. No reason to hesitate as yet, no reason to shift away from their current positions here. And for Stewie inside, Skadoodle is going to be taken down first by Apex. He does take quite a bit of damage, but now as well, he's actually going to be blind, so Stewie catches the trade as he pushes his way back out. Happy is around the corner, but won't be in a good enough position to actually be able to do too much about that. And as these guys push their way back over towards the B-bomb site, now who will be tested on this site, it's going to be NBK and Kenny. We've already seen Kenny land one shot this round. Let's see if he can rinse and repeat. It's going to be a drop-centric push. All three players here. I've got to say, though, Envious are in really good spots. They've got a good crossfire down, multiple angles, but the entry frag still goes the way of Cloud9. Kenny needs to land this shot. He's missed two of them. 20 seconds to go, and finally, Envious get a grasp of the round. But that was looking far too shaky for far too long. However, five-round lead. And now for Envious, things just continue to grow more and more into their favor there. It's still a little bit shaky in certain scenarios, but I mean, overall, no, now they've got full control of the entire map. The economy of Cloud9 is down in the dumps. Just looking at Tech 9s and P250s for this one, rounding themselves out just around the 2K mark, just so they can buy up on round number 21. So for this one, I don't expect all that much from C9. It's not even really going to be as direct of a play. They smoke things off of her drop. They want to take early control here, but there's no one inside of it. So they're not going to find anything. And that flashbang is perfect. So NBK just walks Ooh. right in, rips them to shreds. There you go. Round's over now. No way there's a two on five recovery. That's it, yeah. That's NBK effectively slamming the door in the face of Cloud9. Stewie tries his best to open it again, but it's just too heavy. Apex cleaning it up and this is kind of what I was alluding to before when I said it may just be a little bit too hard for Cloud9 when it was 11-7, I think. Going through into the second half, it just seemed to bridge too far. Nice break control from MBK, but it was an eco bash, so we can't necessarily hype it up too much. Mag 7 for Devil, full buy for Cloud9. They've got to make this one work, though, Blue, otherwise they're going to be slipping far too far away from this. Envious have certainly got their eyes set on the Major now. Envious may just be in that spot. A little secure now. One of these last gun runs is going to decide how exactly the tone of these next few rounds will go and possibly how the ending of this match could conclude itself. But Envious now looking great and Cloud9 flatlining on all of their T strats. They started off with nothing going down inside of drop once again. The Molotov will fade quickly enough, but MBK sitting here 100% focused on stopping anybody that tries to push out of this room. You see the difference as well, and Envy is taking more initiative off B platform, smoking it off, and then getting a player behind the box. We never really saw Cloud9 do that, as opposed to maybe one round. And then you obviously have the Stewie boost as well. So this now keeps Cloud9 in two minds that they can't even take B platform for granted, because for all they know, it's Kenny S that's boosted up there, and he's just going to rip them to shreds as soon as they push. So it's these small things that don't seem to be that important, which really do stack up at the top level of CS. And now MBK. Be holding the off angle, goes in for the peak, but Stewie 2K is there. Now, this is a great chance for Cloud9. They've got to take it, they've got to convert this. Stewie, now again, still staying though inside of the drop room. They're not moving out just as of yet. They're still just sitting here, waiting the tie bear down, waiting for Envious to make a mistake. And in the meantime, all they've done is they've allowed Envious to move back in and take even more control of the site back from themselves. Cloud9, where are they? Why are they not moving out into the site as of yet? Finally, with 20 seconds that they're going to move in, but Devil is here. Stewie picking up another frag. Look at Devil trying to sneak his way in here. So he's been taken down by Happy, but Devil's not going to be able to get anywhere with this one. Happy though, back into the frags, takes down nothing, but Apex overexposes and Slummy takes it down. So it does work out after all, but indeed it was looking like it would come down to the wire with them not moving in until about 20 seconds were left. Good work C9, patience is a virtue. Now two players in drop for quite a while, didn't decide to push out aggressively or prematurely. They waited for Envious to get a bit too 
and seen him doing so, punish them. And now, the force buy, or at least half buy, is in for MVS. Originally thought it was a force because of MBK's max 7, but he's just equalizing the economy somewhat. This is a chance for Cloud9. There's a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Or is that? <laughs> Shroud. Picking up the first two kills there. The guys from Envy try to play this much more aggressively, but walking into a wall. That wall's name is Shroud. For MBK here too. Not getting any action towards drop just as of yet. Cloud9, despite these two opening kills, not too keen on going into the site just yet. Still holding back and to take things slowly. And Slemmy has moved out towards middle to try and investigate things towards mid as well, making sure there's no flank being lined up there. This good flash allows Devil to try and resume the mayhem, the carnage on B long. Problem is, it's just 5-7. So there's only a, a limited amount that he can get done with that, realistically. Oh, nine again, playing patiently. They are stacking all their plays in the same location with, without anybody watching the back. Now, obviously that's not going to hurt them in this round, but maybe that's something to watch out for in the future if Envy start to try and get a bit aggressive behind them. Happy may very well be the man to do just that. But meanwhile, it's Devil who's holding with the 5-7 for a few more seconds, then I'm sure Cloud9 will be comfortable with an even trade out, but now Cloud9 will just turn the screws and put down Envious, and will be claiming their ninth round. They'll be walking away with this one here. NBK knows he can't do anything since there was nothing to run in his direction from drop, and he doesn't even really have another pistol to try and work with here, only the shotgun. So he'll hang out outside in the site connector for a few moments here, banking on the fact that maybe he can get one or two players to move in to catch him on the chase, but now though, it doesn't look like that will be obliged too much as everybody from Cloud9 backing up out through the platform approach. So all should be able to make it out of this round alive. And NBK saving the shotgun. It's not going to be too big of a deal for those guys. Yep, all things considered, could have gone a whole lot worse for Cloud9. And this will keep the max 7. It does allow them to get a bit of a better buy up as Apex is on 3.5k. You've got 4.3 for MBK, who of course just saved his max 7. But double max 7's picked up. Three assault rifles, plenty of grenades. They do sacrifice a bit of firepower for the trade off four more nades, but they'll be happy enough with that. Cloud9 have Stewie 2 k who started really slow, now on 23 kills. So he's been performing very well. And so they press forward, again, into the default. The same exact play that we've been seeing a lot from these guys so far. You'll note the interesting position being taken up again with the double auto shotty now coming into the mix. You've got Apex just close at the edge of long A there. I don't imagine they're going to be able to see too much with that as Cloud9 seemed pretty set on going for these B-heads. But the option is open, of course, with Slevy sort of being the guardian of the bomb outside there in mid. We are picking that up and taking it in, depending on how these initial push attempts do go. If they fail, though, to try to get drop control, since there is a more active attempt at holding it from NBK, then they may just call it off and go for an A hit instead. We also didn't see any boost from Cloud9 in drop zone. So another little change between the teams, but NBK is known for doing this. Pop flashing out. No one's home for Cloud9, although nothing has dropped down now. So relocating will be NBK looking into the window instead. I mentioned before, Stu's been playing incredibly well. A lot of those 23 kills have been impact frags. So it only paints half the picture. Nothing caught in two minds if he wants to smoke or flash his way to potential success. But he is going to be the interference maker. He is going to be the decoy. As the rest of Cloud9 starting to push their way in and the boost from Apex shuts down Slemmy. The rest of Cloud9 now charging their way up mid. They know Slemmy typically isn't going to be the lurker. So they can pretty much guarantee it's going to be the A play, but that's only half the issue because Dewey is going to land the headshot from downtown with the flash accompanying it. Second kill for him. And the meanwhile, MBK is going to assist onto nothing as Happy pulls the trigger. 13 to 9, Envious are in position to try and retake, but this is going to be rough. Skadoodle, Stewie, and Shroud holding good positions, and there's Skadoodle already picking up one of the two kills, and well, with that. Happy just gives up entirely. No reason to try and find a way back inside. Always so hard to retake from that position when you're still stuck behind the big wall behind the main doors. So with such limited angles to work with, unless you could go for like the monster flank, but that takes so much time to wrap around anyway, they're just going to have to give it up. And again, Happy will be looking to save the AK, which he's scavenged. Not a whole lot of money left, though, for these guys to work with, so that still may end up being the only significant thing they bring into the next round, as they're only going to have a third losing bonus. 
So the plot thickens here, Blue. Envious have the lead. Their economy has been shaking. It's been wobbling, and they have not been able to stabilize just yet. Cloud9 on the brink of being right back to even again, as you can see now on your screens. Envious decide to go for a bit of an investment into this round with pistols and Kevlar. They've got the AK from Happy. You can see uh, how aggressive, again, the guys from Envious are being held from the A-bomb site. They've gone for the stack here. Cloud9, I believe, tried this once before on their first half, too. And it didn't really end up working out so well. Considering the play went towards B and NBK. NBK takes such huge risks, but he's the only player here. Is very ballsy. It could just lead to an outright disaster if he doesn't find anything. It's also what Shroud did against them when he landed that one tap with a deke uh, onto Kenny S. Very similar, very reminiscent play. So trying to return the favor. As you say, it is definitely a big risk. Because if you get caught there, well, B's suddenly looking very appetizing for Cloud9. In all honesty, B is still kind of wide open here with it being just NBK. Cloud9 just needs to go for it here, but keep in mind, they're not going to have as much intel as we can see here. No one's really gone back over towards mid to investigate anything as of yet. You can see that now as Slemmy moving his way over there towards the edge of Long A. So he may get himself into a mini battle, but he pushes forward here. But NBK trying to hold. They spotted him here, and NBK going to get the message out as well. But with Slemmy still in the presence, I think the guys from Envious over there are going to stick around at least until they can pick up that kill, which they've just done. Kenny takes down Slemmy over towards Long A, and on the site itself, NBK trying to hold off, but then looks the wrong way. He thinks there's drop pressure coming. Wrong about that one. Stewie's going to take him down, but Envious very quickly pushing their way back into the site. Apex, though, doesn't spot Shroud because he flashes himself and with this and nothing picking up two kills again the odds have been eliminated and for Kenny and Happy it might just be worth it to get out of here and that's exactly what they're doing Kenny's gonna boost his teammate back up to the halls I believe Kenny's making a run for it it's smart doubles their opportunities to save the weapons if they're in different directions gonna get charged down from all four cloud nine members but great round from cloud nine all things considered it did look a little bit sketchy when Kenny S connected the CZ shot and took the AK away from them, but after that it was all one-way traffic. Cloud9 cruising down the highway, and we'll be reaching the destination of 11 rounds in just a few moments' time. The question is, how many weapons will they take on that journey with them? And the answer is potentially none, if Happy has his way. Kills are being exchanged, and both remaining members are low off Cloud9, or at least Skadoodle. But they are going to manage to get the kill, and they have enough funds to replenish those weapons, no problem. Yeah, as, as you said there, the, the money that Cloud9 still have left in the bank is still going to be the big issue there. 9.7k on Skadoodle, 8.5k on Shroud, and 5.4 on Stewie in the post buy. The other two are a little bit lower off, but those three alone should make up for quite a few of these last couple of rounds of the being on the T side. Even if Envious do start stacking them up again, they will lose through the losing bonus. But as we get into this next round here, Smokey is going to come out from Shroud. That actually helps Devil out a little bit if he wants to get up onto this area. But now taking a big amount of spray from Shroud. Got to be careful about that. Only 23 HP to work with. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay. He's all right. S safely below the wall. So. I, I worried for Devil's life <laughs> just for a couple of seconds. Now, if that killed him, I would have been angry. Because <laughs> that was nowhere even close to him. <laughs> that would have been just CS Nate things. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another boost from Envious. MBK with his Mark 7, he is so potent in these kind of situations. Cloud9's way of counteracting this previously has been to throw a Molotov in there and force them to retreat. They have two mollies still in their hands, so it wouldn't surprise me if we saw one of them tossed out if they are going to aggress onto the B site, just to make sure they can get control of drop as well, because if you all push out of B platform, that is a recipe, that's a cocktail for disaster. But accompanying them is the flashbang. And the molly as well, but what can Devil do behind the statue? He's going to get completely wrecked from Stewie 2K. Has zero impact in this round. Stewie, meanwhile, throws down the smoke. He's been able to use this to try and navigate his way round the back of the CTs and cause as much mayhem as possible. The bomb has been planted in the smoke, and now it's a five on three retake, but they're already on the site. They're already committed to this one. Happy's going to go big with a kill, but now he's all that remains in a one versus three. He's still using that smoke to his advantage. Lance the shot onto Slammy. The remaining two players are up on the platform. Can he do this? This would be a ridiculous clutch. And they're pu pushing him one by one. The problem is he had no smokes, no flashes, nothing to deter the terrorists. And Cloud9 are now just one round behind. Enemies look so confused on that retake. Like, they just throw themselves into the fray. And, and you can see, looking at their player cameras, they're looking every which way to try to find any piece of intel. But there's nothing coming at them. And they're just pulling at whatever they can grasp, essentially. Cloud9, though, 
They move in and they take good control. Sadui again opening the way for Cloud9, finding those big entry kills. And is currently wow. leading the team by a pretty big margin, 27. 27. Yeah, with five assists or so involved in more than 30 kills. That's not too shabby. It's a lot of impact on the game. Envious, not going to pull the trigger on a force. Instead, it's another half. We thought this map might be close. And it's definitely lived up to that <laughs> so far. And for Envious here, still holding most of their defenses towards the B-bomb site. Cloud9. Here's the other thing too, at least like from my perspective of this, with how slowly Cloud9 are playing their T side, I imagine that like for Envious that's like sort of a thing that, that itches them a little bit here. And that yeah. Cloud9 always go for such a late execute. They run down the timer so low, and then all of a sudden, once Envious like just sort of is in there, like, come on, when's the take gonna come? And then they just explode out onto the site all of a sudden. And most of the time the initial defenders from Envious aren't doing too good of a job of picking up a kill or two. Well, the way to counteract that is, is from a CT's point of view, especially in rounds where you are on pistols, is to just try and push up somewhere and get information so that you can then know where the execute's going to come and you can therefore set up accordingly, which they have just been totally unprepared to do. We've seen a couple of boosts, but that's about it. We haven't seen anyone really try and push around the back of them. This is a beautiful flashbang. Is he going to get the reward? Yes, he is. Shroud goes down. Apex needs to be careful because he's about to get flashed himself as he pushes out of mid. No one's looking, though, from Cloud9, so he's just going to dart back. Get himself to free AK-47. Yes, the bomb's going to go down, but now this adds an extra element to round 26. I don't know if they're expecting Apex. Look, oh, nice recovery from Stewie, though. He gets him as well on top of Shed. Takes down Apex, and all of a sudden, the four left alive here. There's going to be a good pop function. Joe gets them some ground to work with. NBK finding one. Stewie trading it back out, but he didn't realize Kenny was so close to the broken wall here on A site. Moving in. Kenny grabbing another one into nothing. It's all in Slummy's hands now. Picking up one, but that's all he's going to get. That's unreal. Envious. When they were one round away from losing this lead, they bring it back. The dominoes that had to line up for Envious to win that round. Apex gets the kill. He doesn't get any more after that, but he, he drew out two players to look down on the headshot wall and try and filter him out. In doing so, they allow two players to come out of balcony and flash it, and MBK gets a kill. And then I think it's a 5-7 from Kenny S also gets the kill. So if one of these plays goes slightly awry, if Apex doesn't get the frag in mid, that round com comfortably goes away of Cloud9. As it stands though, Envious now, out of nowhere, are, are looking really strong again. So we'll see if they can keep that going, of course, because they did allow Cloud9 to build up a pretty dangerous bank. Molotov's being... Oh, come on. I think they're actually going to have to cancel that run boost because of those flashbangs, as it does make them feel like the play is going to be coming in. So we won't be seeing it this time around. But there we go. Now it's been lined up. They know it's safe, but they're just going to boost the player up on top of the tree boost position instead. Just to play it safe in the event Cloud9 did take up positions and they'd be able to pick him off there by this point in time. Times like this, the Cloud9 need to just dust off the cobwebs of that last round, not let it get to them too much. We know they've got a lot of tenacity and grit, is something we mentioned earlier, even when they're behind, and exactly what's seen them even get back to this situation in the first place. They're still up against it. They're still gasping for air. Envy is trying to drown them. Nothing again. We've seen him in this position a couple of times and not do a great deal with it, so maybe Isturi flashes him in, he can try and push on to it the left-hand side of drop, but there would be two CTs waiting for him if that was the case. Everything hinges on nothing, I've got to say here. If he comes out and gets a kill, this round's on. Him and Stewie lead it though. Devil, they're not even going to check the transition, removes in. Devil oh grabs both goodness. of them. Stewie and nothing go down. Slummy though is finding two kills, so he's traded it, but then MBK finding the third for the CTs. They move on on the platform. It's Scoodle and Shroud is the last two alive, but they're just going to line right up for Happy. And he closes out both of those kills. Envious are one round away from re-earning that spot at the Major, which they lost in devastating fashion back at Columbus. Take nothing away from Devil. He has no right to get two kills from that position. No right at all. And that was a determining factor. Slemmy, his brilliance got two kills as a result of that, but the damage was already done. It turned into being just a straight up B-plat rush. And against Envious, your days are numbered if that's what you're turning back to. Cloud9 still have the funds to make a real go of this. They still could take us to overtime. It's not impossible. The run boost from Kenny though. He's already spotted Skadoodle. He knows he's back in the corner there somewhere. But Skadoodle's smart. He doesn't want to stick around, otherwise he's going to be trapped. So he uses the flashbang to get the heck out of there. Yeah. Kenny, again, hasn't been setting the world on fire. He's 16 for 16, but you can't afford to take risks, especially at this stage of the game. Scoodle must know that he is a big part of the puzzle. 
and Cloud9 want to come back into this. He's 20 for 14 at this point. It's not anywhere near as impressive as we saw him playing yesterday, though, and that is ultimately the problem is it's not this highlight play from Skadoodle. Nothing, though, in drop. Fails to pick up the first kill. NBK is going to drop him. Now, again, Envious still holds strong. Cloud9 starting to shift their players over towards the B-bomb state to get ready for what could be their last attempt at a take. And Stewie coming in on a flank, though. Nobody's really looking out towards long A, so he could get a lot for free right here if he plays this properly. A bit perplexed as to why nothing would push by himself when the rest of his team are only a matter of seconds away. Why not wait and push all together? 30 seconds now, and it's going to be another B-plat push. But look at this. Because they pushed Apex round the back, they know it's a B-hit, and they're going to stack it accordingly. This is going to be a slaughter for Cloud9. Surely they can't get out onto the site, and Apex, who's managed to get himself all the way around the back, is rewarded with two kills, and Cloud9 are going to be swept aside from Envious, barring a huge play from Stewie, and it's not going to come in. Envious take it 16-12. And with that, they're back in the major at Cologne, getting another chance to re-earn their spot at the top where they were previously, but so devastatingly went down, and for Cloud9, while well, they're not out of the running just yet, they're not going to get to earn it in a good fashion against one of their previous adversaries from probably their best period, which was the summer of last year. Well, they they definitely didn't look the, the envious of old. They didn't have the most solid performances, but they got there, and that's the important thing. They can iron over a lot of these cracks. They can go back to the drawing board and figure out what's been going wrong for them in the time until the major. This is what they came for, and this is what they've got. Congratulations to Envious, but Cloud9 aren't out. They still have another chance. They still have an opportunity to qualify for the Major. That means they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. And they are indeed going to need to play at least one more match here to try and earn that spot against what could be quite a few different opponents that we'll have to wait and see a little bit later on today. For Envious, though, owing a lot in this event specifically to Apex and his good performance over the past couple of I don't believe it was as prominent here in this map, but to get them to this point and to keep them in the event this far, definitely want to be giving him quite a bit of credit. And an interesting development too, of course, that we saw here was Devil taking over the leadership. An interesting move that actually, to a certain degree, somewhat equates to what Cloud9 have done with Slemmy. Bringing in a newer player, seeing what he can do with the leadership, and letting the kind of old dogs that are used to being that used to being uh, capable fraggers take that take that role. And let's face it, also the, the, the players that you'd say are more talented and more individually skilled. Right, allow them to just focus on what they do, and that's kill people. Anyway, that's enough from us, Blue. We're going to head down to the, the uh, stage, and Mitch has an interview lined up with one of the en Envious members. Thank you very much. We've been able to pluck Apex from a celebrating Envious squad here as well, as they just start to realize that they will be back at yet another major. Apex, good to have you here. I did actually want to ask you specifically about how you guys played on that CT side, because Cloud9 played really slow. They play really slow towards that B-bomb side, often mid to late round pushes. And you guys are a team known for your pace. You get in people's faces, you take battles and you win them. So is it strange playing up against that kind of style from Cloud9? Or are you just kind of used to it? Or are you comfortable with it? Well, we used to play against teams who are playing slow and cobalt. Almost every team are playing really slow and cobalt. So we just knew how to adapt to them. And yeah, we, we play pretty well on seat side. Absolutely. Now, you guys obviously a couple times over the course of this tournament, we've seen you, you might sort of uh, lose a gun round and then buy into four MAC-10s or some sort of variation of that. Everyone's going, what are they doing? Because sometimes we see it work out brilliantly, sometimes not so great. Normally you can buy back after that, but tell us a little bit of your take on that one personally and why it works for you guys. Well, it's uh, typically, a, it's a typical round. It's when people doesn't have uh, Kevlar with headset and then it's, with the Mac 10, you can run and shoot at the same time, and it's it's really easy to, to shoot with this. So that's why we're doing this, and yeah, it's it's cool strategy. It's envious strategy, you know. I was gonna say it's such a you strategy because you just love to run and gun and get in people's faces, right? It's it's great to see such a characteristic approach. Now let's uh, talk about the future, and of course, the last few months. It hasn't been an easy one for you guys. You've been questioned. You probably questioned yourselves at some point. But how much? How are you relieved to know that you're going to be back? at another major yet again to represent your country? Well, it's really cool, mainly because except against Gambit, we play pretty good tournament. We just changed in game leader like three days before the, the major qualifier because we had some struggle on with the team. And now, yeah, we're more comfortable. We're not at our best at our peak, but we feel better. And hopefully we're going to come back for the best major in Cologne. 
You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Envious are going to the major, and they're looking pretty darn good at that. Thank you so much for joining me, Apex. I'll hopefully see you around, and there it is. Now, for Cloud9 fans, all hope is not lost. They still have one more chance to fight through and make it to the major. It is still possible. But that was a game and a half. We saw Envious now show us a little bit more of what they've been cooking up. But let's see what our experts have cooked up on the desk. Thanks very much, Mitch. I don't know how much cooking has gone on. We did just have dinner, though, and yeah. that was lovely. Yep. So we've got a little bit more energy for this next discussion. So four spots of the eight available in this qualifier are now locked up. The French side taking the fourth. We have FaZe, Mouse, Optic, and now Envy. That's our four to the major, and of course, another four spots lying in wait. We're talking about the next game in just a moment, but first, let's have a little look back at that cobblestone. That might have been the best T-side performance from Cloud9 that we have seen at this event. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. It was about 9.13 and they built back. They went on quite a nice run of things. The irony being they actually got broken by what was a stack in the end. It was, if I'm not mistaken, it was a stack towards B from Envy. And actually, Cloud9 played it well on the T-side. They pushed through, got the bomb plant pretty well set. And then the retake came out from Envy, even though they're down to pistols. I think maybe a Mag-7 for MBK, but it was a very light investment. And then they lost it. It's one of those fundamentals where you kind of expect the team play to kick and the communication to stay really crisp. Didn't seem to happen. Yeah. And Envy, I was sat out here. I was watching the game go down, and I've never heard Envy that pumped up at these sort of events. Normally, they are the most kind of withdrawn, chilled out, just kind of, you know, taking it as it is. We just shoot people, blah, blah, very easy for us, right? Yeah. No, they, they were incredibly invested into that game. So that was really quite scary to see if Envy are getting back to that form. Rare to see that hunger from Envious. Yeah. They've had, they haven't, it hasn't been necessary in the past. They've just managed to get by on that individual skill and that strategy. But now, as I said, changing a leader three days before an event, and they managed to get themselves the spot in the major all the same. Yeah, no, definitely an impressive feat. And uh, I, I think uh, Apex put it nicely. You know, for the better part of it, it was a pretty good tournament on their end. Yeah. Uh, they definitely show that they, they're trusting Devil a lot more. And I, th I think Devil himself just played a lot better. It seems like when he's given more responsibility, he he actually thrives in that kind of position. He didn't have the greatest of games now on Cobble, especially on the CT side, had a bit of a struggles, but luckily, you know, you have pretty good teammates to, to help you out in that kind of a situation. Yeah. I think uh, if you want to go to the T side, MBK deserves special recognition for what he was able to do, opening up sites for MB time and time again, which is normally what Apex does for them. But MBK was just uh, in full fire on, on that T side and helped them greatly. And CT side, happy comes along and is uh, just doing a masterful job of shutting down Cloud9 for the better part of it. And even outside of just you know that stopping power, actually yeah. MBK and Devil had a wonderful kind of combination that came together by drop. Nothing had such a struggle. And even I think there was actually two players who walked straight past Devil in that drop room, allowed you know a chance back in for Envious. And a couple of mistakes there for Cloud9 really cost them a good couple of rounds. And you could see that just really building against them. Their faces looked so sullen after some of those losses. But yeah, credit to Envy. They've come back in and they're starting to look like they're actually rebuilding a team because there were so many whispers of this team looks like, is it on the edge? Yeah. Is, is it gone too far? So nice to see them consolidating things here. Let's not forget Cloud9 are not out of this yet. They joined the rather stacked pool. In fact, I have it in front of me. Let me make sure I get this right. Okay, Tyloo Dignitas, Flipside Hellraisers, Cloud9. That's a lot of scary teams, and they're all going to be battling another game today. We're going to be re rejigging the pool and doing those seeds in just a moment. We've got one more game before we can do just that, though. We have to see how G2 and Gambit does go down. That'll be our final winner's match, and another slot will be taken by either the Samurai of G2 or Gambit, who already impressed us here in the ESL Arena at Katowice. So we're going to take a quick break. When we do come back, though, it will be a battle between the two Gs, G2 and Gambit, after this.